Satnam and welcome. And today I'm inviting you to something very special, to an 11 day sadhana that we are going to explore our heart. I want to give you the gift of knowing, opening and connecting to your heart so that you can harmonize your body, your mind and change the way you perceive life and experience life. We are conditioned to live life through our mind. We are analytical, everything happens up in the frontal lobe where we analyze everything that happens in our lives. We are a victim of our environment, of the circumstances and of the events happening to us. And most of the time we remain in our minds trying to find solutions, trying to find ways to solve certain problems, trying to rationalize and bring sort of excuses as to why certain things are happening or why we're taking certain decisions. And that comes a lot from our upbringing because from the moment you're in your mother's womb to the about age of six or seven, we are like sponges. Our mind is not analytical. Our mind just receives, records and absorbs everything that we see. So the environment we brought in, the parents, the family, the country, the traditions, the cultures are our stereotype, if you like, the way we analyze and survive in this world. So when the child is brought into an environment which is loving, which is structured in a community of understanding and of harmony with the environment, the child then brings these positive patterns in their lives as we grow up. That's not really very common, unfortunately, simply because how our world has evolved and how our lives have been. And more often than not, we have had certain traumas in our past life, whether that is because of economic pressures when we were brought up, whether this was because of um, broken relationships within our immediate family, whether this was a more conservative society where we're not thought of us as human beings. All of this imprints in your mind a certain type of stereotype. And that leads us to staying very much in our analytical mind, trying to go back to what we know, what we've learned mostly from our childhood, put a filter on it and explain it to ourselves in such a manner. I have to always struggle because that's how it's been, that's how my parents have been, so that's normal. I have to find just a partner so that I can kind of have a family because that's expected of me, that's the social pressures, the peer pressure, so I have to do this. I have to find a job and then work and then work nine to five and absorb the environment I'm in and accept as it is because I have to, I have to, I have to. Now, what happens when we acknowledge the heart is that we drop into something very, very special and something that actually contains us as a soul. The heart is an organ from a physical perspective and also it's our fourth chakra from a yogic perspective. And from both worlds, whether Western or Eastern, the heart symbolizes something very, very important. From the yogic perspective, it's the fourth chakra. So if you imagine your chakras being the, the lower triangle and then the upper chakras being the upper triangle, so the first three and the first and the, the first three and the top three, they all meet at the heart. And the heart is said to be the conduit between the two worlds, the material world and the spiritual world. And the communication through which we understand and filter through the heart, through the truth, through the honesty of who we are and how the universe works, so that when everything is balanced, we function in a harmony. In the Western world, the heart has never really been known in reality. So we all know that the brain is the biggest organ, the main driver, the main computer of how, who we are, how we are, our biological functions, physical functions, 
as it sends all the hormones into the body for the body to adjust to certain environments. So very much we are reacting to what happens from the outside. Now, very recently, on a more research-based science, following multiple heart transplants, it has been found and proven with hard research that the heart in itself is a very unique organ. And what they found is that in the heart, as unbelievable as this sounds, it has 40,000 specialized cells. And these cells are called sensory neurites. And they mimic very much the cells we find in the brain. And it's also now known that the heart is our second brain. What also was found that we have a communication between the brain cells and the heart. And it's actually the heart communicating to the brain as to what the brain needs to produce for us to harmonize the body. It's the human ability and only the humans can evoke an emotion. And through an emotion, we can actually change the way we think, the way we react, and the way our body reacts. So there is this whole intelligence in your chest, in your little heart, that has its own language, the language that the body speaks. It has its own communication with the brain computer, if you wish, sending it signals, and there is a constant communication between the two. Now, you may ask, well, what does that mean for me? Well, we are in a world where it's fair to say we are fairly closed from emotional expression, from understanding our own state of mind and state of being. We have closed the heart and we have really just focused up here. And what is very beautiful and very transformational as an experience is when you understand, locate, and feel how the heart opens up and how the heart starts to harmonize the whole body, harmonize the, the whole chakra system and how that affects you. Now the heart functions very separately from the brain. And this is a very, very interesting aspect to play around with. Because if you think about it, think, you're placing things into your mind in certain boxes in certain cells that things should be fitting in. The heart doesn't function this way. It has its own intelligence. It has its own memory. It thinks by itself. It feels. And they have found that when they would do the heart transplants, that certain characteristics of the receiver of the transplant would change. You would start craving foods you've never craved. You would, for example, speak a different language. I remember my mother had a patient, my mother is a dentist, a patient came in who she hasn't seen for like 10 years. And that old lady um, who was in her 80s had a heart transplant and out of a sudden she woke up after the operation and she was fluent in French. And there are more and more anecdotal evidence of, of these stories where the donor carried certain information through their heart to the receiver. And it has been taken very seriously. And it's really encouraging to see how what has been known for thousands of years by yogis and spiritual leaders is now being actually proven scientifically. So what I want to invite you to do is understand what it would mean for me in my life to actually connect to my heart and to also realize that connection and that harmony between my heart center and my brain. And what it does, it opens up us to infinite potential, a potential we're all born with. And because of our limited beliefs or because of our environment or because how we were brought up, we tend to ignore or not even acknowledge. But we're talking about unlimited intuition. Intuition that you have, and you probably have experienced spontaneous intuition, where sometimes you, you know, so often some people go and try to cross the road and they stop for a second 
and then a car passes and they haven't even seen it. Or you call your mom and the same time she's calling you because you both had that connection. But what we're also saying is that within the realm of possibilities, there is a way for us to awaken that intuition so it guides us. And Yogi Bhajan always said that we as humans need to nourish our capacity awareness to awaken intuition that it guides us to hear our own higher self, our own higher voice. So we don't just apply filters, but we actually feel what, it, what would be the right decision. We can actually feel which partner is the right partner for us. So our heart will tell us within three minutes if this person is the potential partner you want to spend your life with. But we analyze, we feel pressure from the environment and we very often give that person who we already know the answer three years, five years for them to prove us that our initial feeling was right. So it's almost like giving yourself the permission to awaken your inner self from the heart and awaken that inner voice which is so paramount in guiding you in situations where you feel fearful, where you are anxious, where you feel isolated or lonely. Because the heart is an intelligence that will guide you to the right energy. And also I want to explore a little bit the, the concept of attraction because many people initially thought, okay, if I just sit long enough and I just think about it, I, w I want my perfect partner, I don't want to be alone, I want abundance in my life, I want everything. And if I really think very hard about it, I will actually attract it. The way energy works, it vibrates. It's a vibratory force. And for us to attract, we need to raise that vibration to a level that will attract a similar vibration. And to do that, we need to establish that connection. We need to harmonize. We need to have a um, consistency of vibration between what our brain emits and what our heart vibrates. And then that will transform into our auric field. And our auric body stretches 13 feet both directions. So although your physical body finishes here, your energetic body is much wider, much longer. It surrounds you. And that is the field through which you create, through where your creativity actually materializes and where you attract. So the electromagnetic field works as an antenna and then also like a magnetic force that brings everything you need in life because you are in that state. So when we say, well, I'm waiting for the perfect partner, or I'm waiting for the perfect job, or I'm waiting for a great friend to arrive, or I'm waiting for me to become abundant. It will never happen because we're not sending the right message to the universe. We need to establish that feeling in the heart. We need to feel it as if it's happened, as if it's now, as if I'm already content with myself, as if I'm, my body's already healed, as if I'm in love already with the greater force. And that feeling, will attract that material side. It's the vibration attracting the same vibration back in. So what we're gonna do in our 11 day sadhana is we're gonna work on an energetic level, awakening the energy around the fourth chakra and spreading our aura as wide as possible and then bringing it back in into the heart. And that way, we're gonna establish a coherence between the brain waves and the heart vibration. And it will take at least a minimum of three days for our neurons, if, if you would imagine the neurons, they're like little bulbs and then they have all these little antennas and they're very sociable, so they go and look for another neuron. And as you're trying to progress, grow, learn a language or learn a different skill, these neurons just try to get to each other and establish a connection. And through repetition and through constant practice, they then 
stay together otherwise they touch and they go and they touch and they go so for us to change and really have a more permanent sense of achieving this heart brain connection we need to have a disciplined repetitive action and that's why yogi bhajan was so encouraging of us having a consistent daily practice especially when doing a sadhana and a sadhana is a daily practice often doing the same thing over and over again that you can take over 11 days 40 days half a year a year or sometimes even two years because when you do this you are literally training on the physical level you're training yourselves your neurons to get into that network and then that remains part of you and then that is something you carry and that will awaken a phenomenal potential a phenomenal intuition a phenomenal power to deal with complex information which is so paramount right now you can train to see through your heart and you will remember everything you've seen without having to recall it from your brain brain is if, if I'm to put it more from a modern day type of experience is your um, hard drive the, the portable hard drive you plug it in has the information you plug it out doesn't remember the information it's somewhere there but you kind of need to have that connection for you to access what the brain knows the heart the heart doesn't contain information in such a respect or in such a data format let's put it this way the heart contains the tiny minuscule seeds of everything that you've experienced of all the traumas of all the feelings of all the happy moments experiences everything that is and surrounds you is in the heart but the heart is the organ that generates the feeling as well so what we will do is connect to the heart awaken the heart and heal the body the mind and awaken the potential for us to attract in our lives what we really need and feel is missing so that we don't resolve into solving our problem with immediately we, we, we reach out for oh god i'm so stressed out i'm really anxious i i i, I need my pills and you you are on medicine because you feel like you are out of control of your life and you need that sense of calmness you learn to let go you learn to feel okay with yourself because everything is all right as is and you also experience a fantastic healing power because when we are in harmony and this has been studied by research as well what happens when you harmonize the the brain and the heart and you awaken the energy of the heart it starts sending the signals to the brain of more than 20,000 biochemical reactions and many of them are healing many of them are getting your immune system on overdrive getting your nervous system in complete balance getting your cardiovascular system again on overdrive and just basically having a body that's very very balanced and a mind that's also relaxed because all of this eventually is actually controlled from here so i invite you to actually take that class with the utmost care compassion for yourself for the others and just really explore how beautiful and how powerful this whole experience would be so every day please you can practice in the morning or in the evening whatever feels better for you you can practice it twice a day it's a short meditation but it's the time where you connect and it's the time where you allow to step out of the outer world walk in to your inner world and find that find that seed find that unlimited power that's dormant and this kind of flourish as you go on 
you, I encourage you also to maybe take a journal and start writing your experiences, your feelings as you go along. And by all means, if you feel that this is something you connect with and that you really truly enjoy, you can take it forward to 40 days, 60 days, 90 days, as long as you feel that something is working and happening. I hope that I'll see you on the mat. I hope you take this with lots of love and compassion, with a feeling of gratitude of our amazing beings, of how we have been designed physically, energetically, and how complex and how intelligent our whole system is. And that you can take this in whatever aspect you want to work in for this sadhana, be it because you are looking for a partner or you're looking for more love in your life or for just expanding your intuition so that you don't get so confused and so frightened by things that are happening. Because if you always center and if you always have that, you can always go back in here and find the guidance. All right, Satnam, I'll see you on the mat.